perfect day of sledding right here. The snow has been epic and the skies are blue, can't even see a cloud. But we're gonna get familiar with the snowpack here because we're again in a new area and we can feel some instability underneath our feet. We've been riding around here feeling some wumps and stuff in the snow for sure. So Duncan went ahead and took the liberty to dig a proper pit here. We're gonna get our hands in the snowpack and just feel and validate what we know is a problem out there. How much snow we got on the ground here, Duncan? Well, right here, uh, we're at about 9,000 feet on a pretty much north aspect, if you really wanna talk about the aspect, um, but we are kind of up on a ridge in a flat. Is this the ideal location to dig a professional observation pit? Not really, because we're affected by the weather. Um, but in this situation, we're just trying to validate the avalanche advisory. They have a considerable avalanche danger with a persistent weak layer. Red flags going off in my head already because of those words. And it's on a north aspect, uh, northeast aspect, and even northwest, I believe, um, at mid and upper elevations. So we're in the zone. We're where it's happening. Like Dylan mentioned, we, can, we felt a whoomp right when we pulled up to this spot, jumped off our sleds. The three of us that were there all of a sudden felt the collapse, looked at each other, spidey senses went off. That there alone tells you nature is screaming, there's an avalanche problem. Our decisions for today were already to avoid avalanche terrain because of the advisory. What we're doing in the snow now is confirming the advisory and looking for strong over, oh, sorry, strong over weak, which is a slab avalanche recipe. If we can identify those weak faceted grains underneath slab, stronger snow, then we've identified the problem. What we should talk about is formal OBS versus informal OBS. So in an avalanche class, especially for recreationalists, and you guys have completed a level one, correct? Level one, yeah. And some rescue courses. Yep. So in that course, professional avalanche educators and people shouldn't expect you guys to be able to dial in a pit and do a professional job and nail every test every time. That's not what a level one is designed for. However, it is designed to get your hands in the snow make observations that relate back to the advisory so you can continue to make good decisions. The other thing that's great, and I saw you guys doing a video the other day, is practice digging in the snow, practice tests. Even if they're wrong, they'll give you some information. Like you guys did some tapping on a compression test, you got some failures, and that mimicked or mirrored exactly what the advisory was talking about. So like high five to that because that's what it's all about, right? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, yeah. We love just getting our hands in the snow whenever we can, you know, we cover so much ground out here, obviously. So conditions can change from aspect to aspect and from canyon to canyon. So getting our hands in the snow whenever we can is always a plus, right? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, that's how you verify what's going on in the mountains. Now, one other thing about digging in the snow or even getting your hands in the snow, it's not a go, no go answer. If I dug in this pit right here and did a perfect formal professional job, did a compression test, an extended column test, and didn't get any failures today, that doesn't mean I'm gonna say, dude, it's safe, let's go send the big stuff. Because obviously from the advisory, it's not. There's recent avalanches in this zone over the past week. That alone, with identifying that there's facets under buried stronger snow, like that, like that's a problem right there. So. Let's go ahead and do some of this a little bit and we'll just show maybe uh, how to do some informal OBS. And then if you really want, like, I know you guys are down the track to improve your education. I, I've heard from other friends of mine that are educators, you're signed up or maybe thinking about signing up for that level two this mm -hmm. year, which is a great course. Part of the level two is giving you the skills and then coming out of that class with how to dig a pit to the correct dimensions and do the tests to the correct dimensions with the correct isolations and like it's three days of like practicing that stuff and then obviously after that it takes a lot of practice to get good at this stuff um, but what we can do here is some quick informal obs just to show you how to confirm the advisory you don't always have to dig this deep but being new to the zone i also being the my real first real ride of the year i really wanted to see what how much snow is on the ground up here and what we're dealing with because That'll paint a picture moving forward for the next time I come to town. I can understand what's even deeper in the snowpack and kind of like keep a, a log of what's going on. Yeah, you build that picture throughout the season in your head of what's going on underneath you. Awesome. Well, let's get into it. The first thing I start with is called a shovel tilt test. Now, it's not a formal test, but what it can show me is different layers in the snow that I should pay attention to especially if there's something that I'm not sure about or if I didn't recognize when I looked at my layer identification. 
So this is my OBS wall over here, and I'm looking for differences, different layers, right? So you can see there's a crust here. This is the recent snow, looking pretty good, like a foot and a half-ish or a foot. And then you go down, you got some changes here, another something here. And as it goes down farther, you get into this older snow and that good old, where are we, Idaho? Good mm -hmm. old Idaho facets, <laughs> right? So these are big chunks, large grain crystals. Um, they're talking about D2 avalanches in the zone with that persistent weak layer. So I'm guessing, you know, it could be reacting anywhere in here. Reading the advisory and digging into the content of it is where I'm gonna learn where those actually live, right? Basically, all I'm gonna do is, I like to start over on this side on my test wall, and I'm gonna just lightly put my shovel on the snow to get a outline. I'm gonna take out my Viking saw here. I'm just gonna cut straight lines and feel what's happening when I cut. You know, I can feel the crust in there. I'm gonna to need to clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna cut this side here, trying to keep it plumb. You can see my lines are kind of off. You're also gonna see how much snow is actually manageable in this informal test. So with this, I'll take about, let's see, I wanna get below that crust, see what's going on. So I'm gonna try this much and see what happens, but that's a lot. I usually take about half that because it's really difficult to balance it and you'll see. So then I come up here and I just isolate this whole thing, there it goes. And I'm gonna pick it up and tap underneath, kind of tilted to see if that will break any layers that have inconsistency between them. <laughs> We're looking for a failure in the interface between two layers, so. Oh, you see that? Yeah. There it is. So that right there on a big open slope could be enough to produce a D2 avalanche, and that's what they're talking about right now. So to inspect that, well, that almost looks like grapple. See those weird, rounding, awkward shapes? Yeah. Look, everybody have a piece. Yeah, look at that. I do see that, yeah. You can feel this. It's that crust, mm -hmm. it's the underside of the crust. Yep. You can also see how planar smooth it is. Yeah, it is. Which would mean it'd be a great bed surface. Look at these crystals, how easy they are to move around. Without my microscope, I mean, those have gotta be facets, right? Yeah. So that shows us right there that, right here is our problem. Okay, so let's cut a compression test. It's a 30 by 30 centimeter column, isolated on all sides. This being the front, we only have to cut this, and then we need to isolate the back as well. That's the formal test for a compression test. We're gonna tap it 10 times from the wrist, 10 times from the elbow, and then 10 times from the shoulder. What this test shows us is initiation only. It doesn't tell us if that crack can propagate any distance. Because we're such a small column, it's gonna tell us if we can collapse the weak layer. So that's the only thing we're really looking at in this test. It's good information, however, once again, we read the advisory this morning, any result from this is not gonna be a big surprise unless we don't get results. And then I'm gonna say we did the test wrong. We should go do it again in a different spot. So on my Viking saw, I've got 30 centimeters marked. So I'm just gonna move over here, do a little tag like this, go 30 up like so. Make sure that's there. Then I'm gonna cut straight down on this side here. I like to use two hands and feel that crust. It's interesting, you really can't feel those facets underneath that crust when I cut, and not until, whoa, way down there. And that's a whole nother problem we've got lower in the snowpack. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this side a little bit and take it deeper. Now this test is good to 120, around 120 centimeters down from the surface because that's about where we can initiate as recreationalists. So now I'm gonna cut out the rest of this snow. The next thing I'm gonna do is gonna cut a wedge on this side. See that break already? Yeah. So failure upon initiation, sorry, failure upon isolating the column 
has its own test score on its on its own. Oh, that's the bottom too. Yeah, that, the bottom oh, one went. So we might be dealing with multiple weak layers here that don't really make me feel great, but we already decided not to ride big terrain. So this is just some fun science stuff. Yes. Okay, yes. kids. Okay. Now we've got our isolated column, all three sides. You can see the saw tip sticking out there. We're gonna start here with tapping from the wrist. You can see that surface snow collapsing because it's, it's, it's soft, it's fluffy, it's been growing surface horse, so it's already faceted on the surface. But that's a good thing, that means there's good turns to be had, like we just had coming up that drainage. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking down the front of the column and down the back of the, or the side of the column, because when the initiation happens, I want to see if it crosses the whole column in one step. If it does, that means the initiation is more touchy, right, or more problematic. Sudden planar results and sudden collapse results, those two results are most associated with human triggered avalanches. So if we get those results, go get on a big slope and we can start gambling on if you're going to trigger an avalanche or not. <laughs> not the thing to do, right? Yeah. So 10 from the wrist and we're just going to let the tips of my finger fall on the shovel because it's supposed to be light. One. Ten. Nothing so far. I'm kind of looking in this area where that crust was or down here maybe. Now 10 from the elbow. The other thing I'm paying attention is I don't want my shovel to travel off my column onto the other snow because then you get another bridging effect. And that's exactly why we isolate the back of it. Okay, now that was 10 from the elbow. We're gonna go 10 from the shoulder. And I'm guessing, what do you think, Jack? Third tap? I think it's gonna be the third, yes. Dylan? Second. Second? Okay, I, I have to go four. Oh! oh really? All the way down. Number yeah. two. Now, what I noticed right away is that might have broken where my saw is left. So what that means is inconclusive test because there's a foreign object involved with it. What I'm gonna do is pull this off. No, it was below your saw. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that first shovel tilt test. Got that. Look at that. You can feel these facets. You can see they have larger grains. I don't even have to break out my crystal card. Um, large grain, sharp angular facets, or faceted snow is more problematic than rounded, stronger snow, right? So I think that there's some terminology out there that all of us recreationalists use, like ball bearings. Doesn't mean it's rounds. Ball bearings just mean it's, it reacts like ball bearings, yeah. right? Because you can't pack ball bearings together because they're slippery and loose. Mm -hmm. So that's what this acts like. But the technical shape of them is sharp angular grains. So another thing I just did there is I broke this at two other weak layers. Now this is the crust that we observed in that shovel tilt. Why it didn't initiate when we tapped on it, you got me, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> but what I can tell you is this is a problem in the snow because we got a reaction, right? This might be even more of a problem because as you can see down here, it's very easy to dig this snow out. I could probably just stick my fist in there. Whereas that is almost pencil hard. So we've got strong snow over weak snow. That's a recipe for a slab avalanche. And a slab avalanche is what will kill you. And, you know, with the forecast calling for this uh, this persistent weak layer that we're seeing about a foot and a half down, you know, we saw some reactivity out of that, out of the shovel tilt test. That could totally step down to the bottom layer, too, yeah. once you're throwing even more load on the slope, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move into an extended column test, which is 30 centimeters upslope, 90 centimeters wide. And again, we're isolating all the sides of it. So our cuts need to be nice and plumb. And again, it's effective to about 120-ish centimeters below the surface. And you can feel down low where my saw just starts to fall through. So now, what I'm gonna do here is remove the snow on this side. And it's easier sometimes to just use the saw to cut through it. 
then you can just move. Okay, now the trick for this one is I'm gonna identify where 30 centimeters upslope is. And you'll notice I put my probe in, but it's farther than 90. The reason for that is we're gonna make this cut and then I'm gonna clean it up and really isolate. So Jack, if you could help me out by grabbing this side. And what I want you to do is make sure you're right there. Okay. And what we're gonna do is saw back and forth. So you might need to loop it around your finger. It's a lot easier. Now we're gonna give it a team saw and then angle get way low. Lower, lower, way low. We're just gonna go back and forth. Go as low as you can. That's probably right there. Okay, let's leave her in there. Now I can remove my probe. The back has been isolated. This has been cut right here. So then I'm just gonna cut out a wedge. That way there's no binding of the side of the column and it can't get locked up. So now we're isolated on all the sides. And again, we're gonna tap 10 from the wrist, 10 from the elbow, 10 from the shoulder. And we're gonna look across the face of the column to see if, if we can get an initiation and if it crosses the whole column or not. If it doesn't cross the column, then the chances of propagation are unlikely. If it does cross the whole column, then chances of pr propagation are likely. That's all this test is really looking for. So, And again, I'm making sure my shovel doesn't migrate off the back of it. Now we're into the shoulder. So right here, no evidence of propagation. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that mean we should go send it? Climb no, big stuff. No. Yeah, we've already identified there's weak snow, under strong snow, slab avalanche recipe. So even though we didn't get propagation, we got some initiation, we've identified some layers, this doesn't change our decision-making for the day. What we can do for just fun, right? This is now moving into informal tests. You get whaling on it. You saw some cracking right yeah. there, but nothing serious. Yeah, there it goes. Did the whole thing go? A little bit broke out Just a little here. farther yeah. again, and that's and that layer. And then the layer. bottom collapsed. Oh, it did? On their last hit there, yeah. Yep, see that? And again, below where we sawed to. That's yeah. crazy. So, and look at this. Look nice at this. and planar here. So a planar surface, very flat and smooth. So we've got the recipe. What this is showing is we really need to be perfect in a trigger point to initiate such an avalanche. So it doesn't change any decision making and for the next little while here, Persistent slab problems don't, they don't fix themselves very quickly. So this is gonna be a problem for a little while to come. Make sure you check the advisory and read what they're talking about because if you can go identify where it is, you got a problem. So ride safe.